Today we're going to be making an animated sky for our games. To start, open a new blend file, and you can leave the default cube. You're safe for now, cube. Anyways, if you go to the world properties, you can change the default color, but it's not very exciting. Click the green dot next to the color and select environment texture. Then in the shading window, change it from object to world. Delete the environment texture and add a color ramp, then connect it. We will also need to add a gradient texture. Connect the gradient to the factor of the color ramp. You'll see that the world splits into black and white, but it's going the wrong way. Using Node Wrangler, press Ctrl T and add a texture coordinates node and a mapping node. Then change the Y rotation to 90 degrees. This will give us a nice horizon line. Using the color ramp you can now change the world color. If you go back to the mapping node you can change the X location to adjust how high the horizon line is. Then change the color ramp from linear to ease. This will give the horizon a nice blend. Now add a mix shader and place it under the background node. Then duplicate the background node. For each layer we'll add a new background node. Move the background up and using node wrangler press Ctrl T again. This will add a new environment texture. For the environment texture, select the sun texture. I recommend that you place the sun in the center of a 2000 by 2000 pixel image. Now connect the mix shader right behind the background node and connect the new background node to the bottom socket. If you look around, you'll find a new sun in the scene. You can adjust the brightness of the sun by playing with the strength slider and using a mapping node to adjust the position and scale of the sun. This will be important for later. But for now, let's add a brightness and contrast node. Then connect it between the sun texture and the background. This will give us more control over the color and brightness of the sun. Duplicate the mix shader again, then duplicate all the nodes for the sun. This will be our moon. Connect the background node to the bottom socket of the mix shader. Then go to the mapping node. For the moon, change the Z rotation to 180 degrees. When you look back, you'll see another sun. To make it look like a moon, add a color ramp and put it behind the brightness and contrast node. Then change the color to something you like. You could also just change the texture to a moon if you have one. For the bloom effect, we're going to jump into the compositing window. I find that doing this doesn't affect the performance as much as using Eevee's built-in bloom shader. Drag down a new window and set it to the viewport. Then change it to render view. Add a glare node. To see the effect, click the down arrow next to the render view and change it from disabled to always. That way we can see it. Going back to the glare node, we can adjust the settings for the bloom. I like to use the fog glow setting. Then we can set the quality to low. Now that we have the sun and moon, let's add some stars to the night sky. Go back to the world shader and add a mixed color node and place it between the brightness and contrast node and the background node. Duplicate the sun node and connect them to the bottom socket of the mixed color node. Then replace the sun texture with a Voronoi texture. The world looks pretty crazy right now, but it'll be our stars, trust me. Change the Voronoi texture from F1 to F1 smooth. Changing the slider will give us these nice splotches. Then add an invert color node and place it between the color ramp and the contrast node. Then connect the distance of the Voronoi to the factor of the color ramp. Now when we adjust the color ramp, we can get some nice stars in the sky. Change the color ramp to ease and push the white closer to the black to sharpen the stars. Changing the scale of the Voronoi texture will adjust the amount of stars in the sky. Now when you adjust the factor on the mixed color node, you can turn the stars on and off. We're almost done now, we just need to add a little bit of animation and logic to the sky. I made a quick scene that we can view the sky from in game. Now let's animate the sky. Select the mapping node for the sun in the shader window. When you change the Y rotation, the sun moves up and across the sky. Go to frame 0 with your cursor over the rotation setting and press I to add a keyframe. To see the keyframes better, open up a dope sheet window. You can also find this in the animation tab. Now select frame 250 in the dope sheet and set the Y rotation to 360 degrees. Then add a keyframe. With your cursor over the dope sheet, press T on the keyboard to set the interpolation mode to linear. That way the sun moves at the same speed throughout the animation. For the moon, do the same thing. Make sure not to touch the Z rotation, and then set the interpolation to linear as well. Lastly, do the same thing for the stars. Just rotate them on the Z axis. This is optional though. I just like to see my stars rotate. <laughs> the sky is all done, but to make it work in the game, let's add some logic. Split the window and select the logic node editor. Then add a new empty into the scene. This will be our sky controller. Add a new logic tree and call it sky. Then apply the logic to the empty. Add an on int node and a play animation node. Then connect them together. Select the self icon and set the end frame to 250. For the animation, select shader no tree action. When you play the game, our sky will move, but it's a bit on the fast side. To slow down the animation, go to the animation speed property and set it to 0.2. When you play the game now, it's a lot slower, but we can slow it down a lot more. Change it to 0.05. This can be adjusted to be as slow as you want. With that, you can now watch the sun rise in your game. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, try checking out this one. Anyways, take care and I'll see you in the next one.